What's going on guys? Thanks for checking out today's ranch video. Today is the first video in a series that I'm going to shoot where I'm going to be testing this aerator right here on my irrigated pasture. I'm always looking for ways to increase my pasture yield and everything that I read says that this is going to do it. But I'm still skeptical until I see the results for myself. So over the next few months, we're going to be monitoring the pasture, see what it's doing, if it's growing good, growing bad, doing nothing. And in the springtime, when I let the cows back out there, that's when we're going to make our final decision as to whether or not this thing actually works. So before we get started, I want to show you the aerator and I want to show you the tractor that we're using to pull it. Let's check it out. This is my aerator that I'm using. It's an eight foot airway. And I realized pretty quick that these things don't work at all unless you put some serious weight on them. So we're going to be running 1300 pounds of weight. I'm hoping my tractor can pick that up. But the way this works is these tines roll across the ground and they punch holes and lift the ground at the same time. And we'll get out there and show you how it works. Let's check out the tractor that we're using. We're gonna be pulling the aerator with the new Holland T2420. This is no different than any other 60 horse four wheel drive tractor. The only thing that I really had to change in order to run the aerator is I had to put these nose weights on there because the aerator is really heavy. It has to be heavy in order to penetrate the ground properly. Okay guys, so yes, the tractor did pick it up just barely. <clears throat> My front end's pretty light now. Good thing I got the weights. But let's run out to the field and get this thing set up. This is the field that we're going to be working in today. You are looking at 12 acres of irrigated pasture in Northern California that the cattle are done grazing for the year. In fact, they won't be coming back out here until probably March. So we've got a lot of time to let the pasture recover from what we're about to do to it. I'm going to adjust this to the maximum angle because um, I'm trying to get the most that I can out of this thing. At this angle, those tines not only cut and punch holes in the ground, but they also uh, lift the ground, which in turn fractures the things below and creates a lot of passages for water and air to get down to the roots. Probably that hasn't been down there in a long time because this is an old field, maybe 50, 60 years old. So there's a lot of compaction going on out here. I, I can tell you that. So because the field's 12 acres, we're going to try to aerate about 10 acres and leave two out to act as our control. So when we come back and check it in the spring, we'll know if we did any good. that weight on there we're still probably only penetrating maybe four or five inches so we'll see if that's enough to, to help the other thing that this should be doing is anywhere where there's a cow pie it should be incorporating that as well okay so you can see what this thing's doing here especially right there it's poking down in the ground and the, the tines kind of twist and it's pulling, you know, like a clump out like that. But what that's doing is kind of fracturing the ground and it's supposed to let air and water down in there. All right, that's gonna do it for us here today. I left three checks that I didn't aerate and that's gonna act as a control group. And what my plan is, is I'm gonna come back every month or so and shoot a little update video and we'll kind of track the progress and see if the aerated checks are doing better or worse or if there's any difference at all. So 
Until next time, we'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Thank <laughs> you.